One of the more popular desktop Linux distributions out there is Linux Mint, and Linux Mint just had a huge release. They just released version 20, codenamed Ulyana, and today I thought I would take a quick first look at Linux Mint 20, their cinnamon edition, inside a VM. Going to the web browser here and reading the release announcement, Linux Mint 20 is a long-term support release, which means you get five years of support, so you can run Linux Mint 20 until the year 2025, which makes sense because Linux Mint 20 is based off of Ubuntu 2004 LTS, which has five years of support. It also has some system requirement information here in the release announcement. You need a minimum of one gig RAM. They say two gigs, though, is really recommended for comfortable usage. And I would agree with that. The Cinnamon desktop environment is a little heavy. Two gigs is probably the minimum. Really, four gigs is probably where you want to be at. But most people these days probably have at least four gigs of RAM. You need 15 gigs of disk space, although they say 20 gigs is recommended. Also, some of the new stuff in this particular uh, edition of Linux Mint include this new application called Warpinator, which looks like it is for using things like SSH, FTP, FTP, Samba shares, pretty cool application. I don't know if I'll take a look at it when I get into the VM or not. We have NVIDIA Optimus support. Also, we have some improvements to the system tray. It looks like the system tray now has the ability to handle mouse wheel scrolling events. We will be running Cinnamon 4.6 as our desktop environment. Cinnamon 4.6 will introduce fractional scaling for those that need it. Also, the GDB tool has received a new user interface for those that are not familiar with GDB. That is a tool used to install dev packages. Like if you go grab a third party dev pack for something like Skype, then you need to use a tool like GDB if you want a graphical way of installing that dev pack. So let me spin up a quick VM here and I am going to install Linux Mint here inside a virtual machine. I gave this VM four gigs of RAM, two cores of my 24 thread Threadripper, and I gave this VM 25 gigs of disk space because they recommended 20. I, I bumped it up to 25 just to make sure we had plenty of disk space for the installation. So when you first launch Linux Mint off the ISO, you have this boot menu and I'm gonna choose Start Linux Mint. So let's go ahead and get directly into the live environment. And now we are in the live environment. I really don't want to play around in the live environment. I want to run through the installation. If you've ever seen an install of Ubuntu or any Ubuntu-based distribution, they're pretty much all the same. Uh, so you guys are, I'm sure, familiar with the Ubiquity installer. It's dead simple to use. So even if you've never installed Linux ever, as long as you can click OK three or four times, you can actually get through a Linux install. So by default, it's already chosen English as my language. I don't need to change that, so I just need to click continue. English US has been chosen for the keyboard. That's fine for me. Uh, if you want to change it to something else, you can. There's also a test field where you can test for special characters if you're changing to something else other than you know your standard English keyboard. I'm just going to click continue here. Do we want to install multimedia codecs? Yes, you're going to need that to get you know a good desktop experience so that's going to give you everything needed for playing all of your multimedia your audio and video formats then the installation type by default it's going to erase the disk and install linux mint to that disk if you wanted to do something else you could choose something else and go through manual partitioning of linux mint if you wanted to do that for me i'm just going to erase the disk and let linux mint have the whole 25 gig virtual hard drive I created. So I'm going to click install now. It's going to warn me that it's about to format that virtual hard drive and write to the disk. I'm going to click continue. Then it's going to ask about the time zone and it has correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. So all I need to do is click continue. Then I need to create my username and password. My username will be DT. And then I need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user for privacy reasons. And then confirm that strong and complicated password. And then do we want to log in automatically? No, I created a strong and complicated password to have to enter a password. So I wanna make sure I have this ticked on, require my password to log in. Then click continue. And the installation will continue. Typically these installs take five to 10 minutes. I will be back once the installation has completed. And the installation has completed. That just took a few minutes. And now to actually complete the installation, what you need to do is click restart now. And that's what I'm going to do. 
it's going to ask us to remove the installation medium. So if you're doing this on physical hardware, what this means is you need to unplug the USB key that you were installing from. In my case, I just needed to detach the ISO from the VM. Now let me log in. And when we first log in, we are welcomed with this greeter. We have this welcome greeter that goes over some of the first steps that you may want to take uh, when you first install Linux Mint. So customizing things like the colors, the desktop colors, the panel layout, uh, going ahead and setting up your system snapshots. So that would be using a tool like TimeShift to take snapshots of your system. Just in case your system ever breaks, you can restore it to a previous working state. We can also launch our driver manager. That is where you would install your uh, drivers for your graphics drivers, Wi-Fi drivers, and things like that. And we also can go ahead and update the system right here. If we click launch for the update manager and click OK, and it should go out and sync the repositories and let us know if there are any updates available. There are. There's 56 updates available. So this was just released yesterday, but already there is some updates that are available. Of course, we have to give the update manager root privileges to do the update. Anytime you install or remove software in Linux, you have to give a root password and you have to have root privileges to do so. It's taking a, a minute to download everything, and now it's installing the packages that it has downloaded. If I click Details, I actually get some terminal output here. It's basically like running the command in the terminal. It shows you what you would see had we run this command in the terminal. If I click Details again, you know that all that output goes away. And that update has finished. It's asking me to reboot after that update because that update included a new kernel. But for now, I am just going to close that out. I, I will reboot after the, the video here. Other than that, we could go ahead and launch our system settings. This is your basically your control panel here. We will come back to this later. We also can view our software manager. This is basically your apt store where you can go and take a look at programs to install such as, well, they give you some editors pick wine, which is a windows emulator sublime, which is proprietary. It is a IDE, basically a text editor GIMP, which is a fantastic free and open source alternative to something like Adobe Photoshop blender, which is another fantastic program. Of course, virtual box for running virtual machines, etc. I do notice since they have some proprietary software in here like Sublime and Skype, I'm assuming that the software center here is pulling down maybe flat packs. I don't know. Let me try to install Sublime and does it actually tell me what kind of package it is? Because I know Sublime is not going to be like in the Ubuntu repositories or anything. I don't know. They would have to probably be using a flat pack or a PPA to install this. If I install it, just want to install it and see what kind of package this would be. So that has finished installing. Let me pull up a terminal really quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the command flatpak space list. This should list any flat packs that we've installed on the system. And nothing was returned. Yeah, I just get another empty prompt. So it did not install Sublime as a flat pack. I'm assuming then it installed it from a PPA because uh, Sublime being proprietary software, it's not open source software. It won't be in like your standard Ubuntu repositories. Getting back to the welcome greeter, one other thing you could do, you could go ahead and enable and configure your firewall. And I'm assuming they're probably using UFW, which is the uncomplicated firewall. It ships by default with Ubuntu. So that's probably what the Mint guys are using. And that is what they're using. This is GUFW. This is the GUI front end to UFW. But if you wanted to, you could just turn the firewall on by sliding that over. You could set up some rules for it if you wanted to. Go to the rules tab and hit plus and then you know, set up whatever rules you needed to set up. I am going to go ahead and close all of that out. I'm going to go ahead and tick off this box here. It says show this dialog at startup. I never want to see this welcome screen again after going through everything one time. You really don't need this to auto start every time you log into Linux Mint. So I'm going to tick that box off and then close the window. And I'm just going to very briefly go over what is installed by default here on Linux Mint Cinnamon. So uh, under accessories, we have our archive manager that is for zip, unzip, and things like that. That is where you can extract archived 
packages. We have our calculator, we have our character map, we have our disks tool, we have the document viewer, we have our file manager. The file manager, of course, is going to be Nemo. That is the file manager within the Cinnamon desktop environment. This is Nemo 4.6.4. Nemo has a reputation of being one of the best graphical file managers available on Linux. A lot of people use Nemo outside of the Cinnamon desktop. For example, I know a lot of people will install Nemo for use in GNOME or in Budgie, you know, other GTK-based desktops. And getting back to the menu under accessories, we also had our font tool. We have GNote. GNote, I'm assuming, is just going to be your standard note-taking application. And if I close it out, yeah, I, I don't think it puts anything in the system tray or anything. No, it went away. All right, under accessories, we also have our image viewer on board, which is our on-screen keyboard. So that would be uh, for anybody that needs that for accessibility reasons. We have our password and key tool. We have Redshift. Redshift is useful for changing the color temperature of your your displays and that is useful you know as the daylight changes from day to night you know outside sometimes you want your monitor to change color temperature as well it's easier on the eyes and it's supposed to be healthier for you for your sleep patterns now nothing happened when I launched Redshift you know nothing appeared on the screen here it's because Redshift is a system tray application so let me move my head out of the way and this right here is Redshift. It's this one right here. It says color temperature is 6500 kelvins and the period is daytime. If I right click on it, I can enable it or disable it. I can suspend it. I can have it auto start or not auto start. And of course, I can quit the application altogether. Getting back in the menu system and under accessories, we also had our screenshot utility. We had our text editor and the text editor for the uh, Cinnamon desktop environment is a text editor called Zed. X-E-D Zed is very similar to G-Edit. It can use a lot of the G-Edit plugins. I actually covered uh, how to customize Zed a little bit in a video about a month back. I did a video on going from noob to power user in Linux Mint. If you haven't checked that video out, check it out. It, it would provide you some really interesting ways to customize Linux Mint, uh, maybe some ways to customize Linux Mint that you haven't thought about before. Also under accessories, we have our USB image writer and our stick formatter. We have a virtual keyboard and we have the Warpinator program that they mentioned in the release announcement. And again, this is for uh, doing anything across a shared network. So if you're doing things with SSH, FTP, SFTP, things like that, this is the tool for that. It says no other computers found because I'm not on a network here. So we really can't do anything with that tool. Uh, under graphics, we have our document scanner, we have drawing, and we have a program called PIX. Let me open up PIX. I'm not sure what PIX is. If I go to the about, it says PIX 2.4.11, an image viewer and browser. All right, well, uh, I don't have any images really to check out here, but it looks like it is an interesting application. Under internet, we have our default web browser, which of course is Firefox. And let me launch Firefox. It's gonna take a second to load. And if I go to the menu here and I go to help, and I go to about Firefox. This is the latest Firefox 77.0.164 bit. And by default, it takes us to the linuxmint.com site. And you do have a custom Google search engine that you could use here on the Linux Mint website. And that you know gives Linux Mint a little revenue if you use that. Also under the internet category, we have HexChat, which is an IRC chat client, and it looks like by default, it is going to go ahead and log in to the Linux Mint channel. Yeah, it does. It logs in to hashtag Linux Mint dash help, which is over on the Freenode network, I believe, and that would get you support if you needed it for your Linux Mint installation. That's a really nice touch that I wish more Linux distributions did is have a IRC client already on the system and have it automatically connect to a support channel because <laughs> that's what people typically are going to want it for anyway. Uh, under Internet, we also have Thunderbird as our email client and we have Transmission as our BitTorrent client. Under Office, we have uh, most of the LibreOffice suite or maybe all of it. We have our um, LibreOffice Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. If I open up LibreOffice Writer, let's check what version they are on. 
click OK there. I'm going to go to About LibreOffice. This is LibreOffice 6.4.3.2. Uh, not the most recent version of LibreOffice, but fairly recent. And just checking on my Arch-based uh, host machine here, uh, LibreOffice Writer is on 6.4.4.2 for me. So uh, again, it's not the absolute latest, but a pretty recent release of the LibreOffice suite. Under Programming, we have Sublime Text, which I installed. <laughs> this was not installed by default. Again, it's proprietary software. It's not something I, I would use anyway. I was just installing this to actually test it out and then to see exactly where that was coming from. Under sound and video we have Celluloid which is our video player I believe. Let's go to the About Celluloid here. Uh, celluloid 0.19. This is a GTK front end for MPV. So MPV is a minimal movie player basically and Celluloid is a GTK front end to that. Sound and video we also have Rhythmbox which is a fantastic music player. Fully featured music player. It's one of the standard uh, GNOME apps. It, this is Rhythmbox 3.4.4, and typically if a Linux distribution ships with Rhythmbox by default, I don't rush to uninstall it. it it's a pretty fantastic program. Back to the menu, we have Administration, and this is where we get things like our backup tool, which I believe is going to be Deja Dupe, or is this uh, Time Shift? I believe this is the Deja Dupe tool. Let's see. If I click Backup now, it's going to ask me where to backup forward, document.backups, forward again. I really probably shouldn't run a backup here <laughs> in the VM, but we just successfully ran the backup tool there. And let's get back into administration. We have our disk usage analyzer, the driver manager, and that's where you would go get your uh, third-party drivers that you need. We have a login window, our logs, power stats, printers. That's for, of course, getting your printer drivers and things like that. We have our software sources. Let me check that out. And it's going to need a root password. And let's see what PPAs are installed. There are no PPAs installed, so I'm wondering where they got Sublime. If I look at additional repositories, a CD-ROM installation disk, maybe they already had Sublime. No, because I installed Sublime after running through, uh, after detaching the, the ISO. Official repositories, let's see. Packages.linuxmint.com, archive.ubuntu.com, slash Ubuntu. Yeah, I'm still not sure where, where the Sublime package is coming from. Also under administration, we have the Synaptic Package Manager. So this is a really nice graphical way of installing and removing software. It's not going to have screenshots and, you know, uh, things like that, user reviews, but it does allow a very nice interface to search for applications that you may want on the system. You just search for something, you click the search button, and you search for a particular program. So if I wanted to install Emacs on Linux Mint, you can do a quick search, and it looks like it has got a million things that are related to Emacs here. But if I search through the list, somewhere in this list I will find Emacs. I will tick it on. I will mark it for installation. It's going to tell me the bajillion things that it's going to install as far as Emacs and all the dependencies. I click mark and then if I hit apply it will run that installation. Now I don't really want to install Emacs inside this VM so I will quit out of that. Also under administration we have our system monitor. Let's check out the system monitor. Let's see what kind of system resources we are using. Now this of course is in a VM so let's let this settle down for a little bit. We're using about 12 to 15 percent of the CPU. That's a little high, but again, this is in a VM. We're using about one gig of the four gigs of RAM that I gave this VM. That's that's kind of normal for Cinnamon, actually. So um, no, nothing too out of whack there. That's pretty normal. Now, if I wanted to check it out in HTOP, because typically I, I do these tests in HTOP, so let me do a Control-Alt-T on the keyboard. Control-Alt-T is a standard key binding in Ubuntu and a lot of other distributions as well. Control-Alt-T typically brings up a terminal, and if I do Control-Shift-Plus sign, it will zoom in. And now that I've got that zoomed in to where you can see, if I run HTOP, HTOP is not on the system. So let's do a sudo apt install HTOP. Of course, you, you could go to your graphical software center to grab HTOP, but uh, obviously it's a lot quicker if you know what you're doing <laughs> just to do it right here in the terminal. So I've installed HTOP. I'm going to run HTOP. And let's see if we get the same kind of figures. 
No, CPU usage is much lower. Uh, checking it out here in HTOP. 2%, yeah, that, that's pretty normal. RAM usage is also a little lower. 830 megs of the 4 gigs of RAM I gave this VM. So we get some different stats running HTOP versus the standard GUI system monitor. Now let me quit out of this. I'm going to run a uname space dash R. Let's get the kernel version. We are kernel 5.4.0-26. Now let me clear the screen and I'm going to run a snap space list. Now snaps are not installed on Linux Mint. That is nothing new. They actually removed snaps from being installed by default a couple of years back. But now the big controversy with this latest release of Linux Mint 20 is they've actually removed the ability to install snapd which allows you to then install snap packages in linux mint well they they just put a minor obstacle in the way you can still get snaps if you want and i can show you that for those of you that are using linux mint and actually like snaps how do you go about still getting your snaps well you need to run this command and this command it can be dangerous if you mistype it, so be careful. You need to do a sudo space rm, which is remove, and then you need to do slash etsy slash apt slash preferences dot d slash and then no snap dot pref. You need to remove that file. And then once you remove that file, if you do a sudo apt install snapd, it will actually let you install snapd. Now that command would have failed had we not removed that no snap.pref file. And now that we've got that done, could we actually install a snap with sudo snap install? And I don't know, is this chromium? Is it chromium or is it chromium dash browser? I think it's just chromium. Yeah, and it's going to pull down the Chromium browser as a snapback. So I know that that's the big deal is getting Chromium installed. And that's usually why people are worried about this snap thing inside Linux. Man, I'm just going to let that run in the background. I actually don't use Chromium and I, I really didn't need it here in this VM. But I wanted to do that on camera because I know a lot of you guys are really kind of worried about the ability to get your snaps still on Linux Mint. It's a very simple fix. All you need to do is remove that one file and then sudo apt install snapd and you're good. Now let me get back to the VM here. I want to right click on the desktop and I am going to choose change desktop background because the thing with these new releases always is checking out some of the wallpapers. And these are a lot of the same Linux Mint wallpapers that have been around forever. I've seen all of those, but they have this Ulyana category for the new release. And this will be the new wallpapers just for this release. Let's check some of these out. And yeah, I really like that tree picture and this pink wood. I'm not crazy about that. Lavender, that's not bad. And Kyoto, oh, pretty nice. And this uh, is kind of abstract art and small town. Not bad. Now, these are pretty good photographs. Typically, I like things that are more minimal in nature. So I would like something actually like this dewdrop picture. Yeah, that's not too bad. Or the leaf here. I, I might would go with that. Actually, the desert one would probably be even oh that, that's almost blinding though that the orange is gets a little too bright for my taste you know what i think i'm just going to go back to one of the standard linux mint branded wallpapers i think i'm just going to go with that for now but let's get into the settings panel i said we would take a look at that and let me get back here and if i go to the desktop this is really what i want because i don't like icons on my desktop so i'm just gonna, gonna turn all that off I like a clean desktop. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I tell you what, Linux Mint 20 Ulyana, at least the Cinnamon Edition, is a very attractive, modern-looking desktop Linux distribution. And I'm glad that I took this quick first look at it. And I know, you know right now there's a lot of controversy going around because of the whole snap thing. You know, we're taking snaps out of Linux Mint and trying to prohibit people from installing snaps. I think that's overblown a little bit. I think a lot of people kind of lost their minds and they probably shouldn't have because it's a very quick fix to get your snaps. It took all of about 30 seconds for me to delete that one file that basically enables you then to install the snapd daemon.
All in all, it looks like this is a solid distribution. Now before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of the show, Michael, Gabe, Heplo, Nate, Corbinian, Mitchell, Entropy, UK, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Omri, Paul, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. These guys, they are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this quick first look at Linux Mint 20 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this show is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DT over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.